My family has built this strong web of chosen blood. People to pick us up from the airport. People who let us borrow their waffle iron and people who will help uplift us when we're feeling low. We nourish this family with laughter, then dinner, then hugs. I always know we will be together again next week. We cook and pour drinks for each other. We test out new recipes and savor the old ones, but each brings us closer together. When one of us experiences loss, we mourn together. When someone has an exciting new opportunity, we celebrate. I nourish myself by honestly making sure that I am happy with where I am at the current point in my life and making sure that I nourish my community. That's part of what makes me happy. The way that I nourish my community is by using whatever platform um, and or privilege I hold to ensure that we feel represented in media and letting my community know that their experiences matter and that their existence matters. Uh, that we are not lucky but deserving of what is around us, such as arts, education, etc. And I always, always, always try to help to empower, whether it's people who are older than me, people who are part of my generation, and people who are younger. Always. That is how I nourish myself and I nourish my community. I nourish my body in simple ways. I turn the brightness down on my computer, I drink water every now and then. Uh, I try to stretch my back out after being hunched in front of the computer like a goblin. Um, but I also try to make long-term investments in nourishing my body. These are the things that I can't see the results of in a single day uh, or even a single week. These are admittedly the most frustrating. The waiting is the most frustrating, but I do think it will be worth the wait. I can wait to make sure my body has what it needs, that I can reach my full potential. And if I can get through the waiting, then I think I can show up for my community more effectively. And I, I want to be able to show up for my community, for my friends and my family, so I'll do the waiting. Did you know that when I feel, I feel so deeply. Even the tiniest, minute drop of feeling causes a tsunami. Sometimes I just wanna endlessly float, staring up at the puffy clouds moving as silently as I. But, you know, I live in a desert. So instead of floating in a sea of blue and green, and instead of watching those juicy clouds float by, I create my own sea with endless bubbles instead of endless skies, and tiny splashes instead of rolling waves. And as I lower myself to my own tiny sea, I close my eyes, feeling the solid tub beneath. I breathe in silence to be able to breathe out care, to be able to breathe out love, to be able to breathe out forgiveness, to simply And as I rise, droplets of soap and water rolling off my skin, I know that within the silence, I was never alone. There is a silent breeze 
that glistens through the smell of rich soil and earth. You breathe in the world and exhale the intensity of it. Your feet are rooted, but you feel unhinged, like a tree toppled over, found in a destitute state, and made into a door again, hinged again, forevermore. It can be complex, such as the human mind, or simple, such as a wish. You're drained like a fountain without water, or a distilled place without light. And even though it can be harsh and savage, in true matters you must stop. Breathe in the earth and remember who you are. To feel whole again, more alive, more nourished. Maybe stop to feed a plant water or help that baby turtle find the ocean again. Or even giving something of value to you, to someone else. It is in that action that you will grow through. Okay, so nourishment in this place and in this time. I understand nourishment differently now. I used to think I nourished for me or I nourished for someone else. That's a savior mentality. Now, I understand nourishment lives in the relationship between me and us and you, mutually. I nourish with you, not for you. I give and receive. Big and little, little adding up to big, big circling back to little. How many acts of nourishment yield a big shift? How many big shifts are made up of millions of little acts of nourishment? Okay, so in this place, in this time, I look for all the little ways I can nourish with. I get clear on what matters and who matters. I get clear on how I have harmed especially in thinking I could do something for you instead of with you. I practice this change every day in a million little ways. The little nourishments, which roll into a big movement, roll into a giant wave, in fact, that moves across time and histories. If I am honest about where we've been and where I've been in that, if we hold each other in this place and in this time, in little nourishments inside of big waves of change, what becomes possible when we do this all days and in all ways? If we do this always, all those millions of little nourishments from us. I started a garden at the beginning of the pandemic. It felt nourishing to keep something alive. We prepared the soil and placed the seeds in the ground and watered them and my daughter read them stories to help them grow. We gave them all the love and care and nourishment we could. And our plants died anyway. Because sometimes that happens. Because it was summer in Arizona and they couldn't get enough water. Because sometimes as much love and care and hope as you put into something, you can't keep it going. But we still can. Last month we planted again. We don't know if these seeds will make it, but we nourish them just the same. Because hope is a discipline. You have to keep at it. You feel your feelings. You water your garden with the hose and your sadness with tears. You put all of your love and hope and care into your community and you don't let up. <sighs> my breath is shaky and my palms are sweaty. I feel my heart rate speeding fast. I take a moment to stop myself. My family and friends are here for me. I am here for them. We hold each other. With food and conversation, we laugh and cry together. Food drop-offs are more. 
There are also love drop-offs. Food nourishes the body and love nourishes the soul. In my community, our spirits are weathering the storm. We plant our feet to the ground. Our ancestors hold us, wait for us, cradle us, catch us. They faced this before. The fight lives in our bodies, all of ours. Though we can't touch, though we can't hold each other, we have each other. Now is a time to hold each other. Soon we will hug the hugs owed. We will hold the hands that have longed to be held. We will be together. This is the power and resilience of my people. With every new day, there's the gift of life and opportunity to water your seeds for your own well-being, inhaling affirmatively. I am strong. I am love. I am light. I exhale what has not served my intent to heal, slowing down time just to be still within my peace and what it means to bring that platform to my own community a safe space to acknowledge speak and release on the traumas that make you you and me me holistically we heal our voices creating gardens from our scars nourishing our seeds to bring flowers to our communities dismantling and healing, learning to dismantle and dismantle to heal, learning to dismantle and dismantle to heal, learning to dismantle and dismantle to heal. I nourish them by holding space just like they have. I nourish them by advocating just like they have. I nourish them by breaking systems that leaves us behind. 